What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, we're gonna give a high-level overview of all or most, probably not all, but most of the technical roles at Google. You demanded, I provide. And before we jump into the roles, yes, this is another Google video. Yes, you have to smash the like button harder than you've ever smashed it before. And yes, I need a haircut. Yes to all three of those things. Yes, yes, yes. Repeat after me. Yes, yes, yes. This is what I do at 2.30 in the morning on a Monday night. Okay, so let's jump into the various technical roles at Google. And we'll start with the one that we all know and love, the one that is near and dear to all of our hearts, the software engineer, the SWE. The software engineer is the pinnacle of basicness. It is the creme de la creme of anticlimactic. The software engineer is the most common role that I know of at Google, and that's what I was at Google. And there's not much else to it. A software engineer at Google is just a normal software engineer who codes. At Google, most people aren't a special type of software engineer. You'll occasionally find some people who are specifically front-end engineers or back-end engineers, like it's in their title. But most software engineers are just that, software engineers, and then they might work on a front-end team or on a back-end team on a full-stack team. But so that's the software engineer. And by the way, if you're preparing for your coding interviews to become a software engineer at Google, make sure to check out my company, algoexpert.io, and to use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. The second role that I want to cover is what's known as a Site Reliability Engineer, SRE. This is a very special type of engineer. I think that the title is unique to Google. At Facebook, for instance, they call SREs production engineers. But so you can think of an SRE as working in infrastructure administration, deployment of systems. SREs typically have a lot more on-call duties as part of their job. They deal with outages, incidents. That's an SRE in a nutshell. A very interesting role overall. And and I might just have a former Google SRE in one of my upcoming videos, so stay tuned. And I should probably mention that SREs at Google are very highly respected. They're generally viewed as hyper legit. So if you're looking to get respect from your peers, then be an SRE. The third role that I want to cover is what's known as a solutions engineer. Sometimes they call them customer engineers, I think. This is a special type of engineer that is effectively a software engineer, but that works primarily on applications that are going to be used by customers. So as an example, on Google Cloud Platform, which is the product area that I worked on, we had a few solutions engineers. I think they were specifically called cloud solutions engineers, and they would basically build build applications using the cloud product that we were working on, cloud IoT, cloud Internet of Things, for customers or for demos at big conferences or big events. So it's very much a software engineering role. It's a little bit more applied, if that makes sense. You're actually building stuff, building applications, writing real code in a weird way. Like I think it's more of a hacker type of role. And it's also more of an externally facing role. You might interact with customers more. You might have opportunities to go to conferences more. So it's that type of role. The fourth role that I want to cover is what's known as a SETI at Google, S-E-T-I. And I think that it stands for Software Engineer Test infrastructure. I should probably double check that. Let me actually look this up. Oh no, it's tools and infrastructure, not testing and infrastructure. So it's software engineer tools and infrastructure. I apologize, I was spreading false information, not testing an infrastructure. And I think that this is a role that is often misunderstood at Google. I think that a lot of people, you can look it up online, a lot of people think that the role is kind of like worse than software engineer or treated more poorly at Google, but that's not true. I think the role of a SETI, of a software engineer tools and infrastructure, is geared for people who care less about building products and more about building 
cool internal tools and infrastructure. There's this weird notion that you'll be primarily writing tests. From what I've heard from a couple of SETIs at Google, that wasn't true. I had a couple of friends in the New York office who were SETIs, and I remember one of them said that he didn't seem to write considerably more tests than I did, for instance. And if anything, he was able to work on cool new projects internally, use a lot of internal Google resources to do his job. So overall, it's an interesting role. Like I said, I think that it's geared more for people who really enjoy perhaps more technical work, or rather who just care less about building externally facing products. And that's it. The fifth role that I want to cover is the machine learning engineer. So as the title suggests, this is an engineer who works specifically on machine learning. Now machine learning engineers do have another title. Some people don't call them machine learning engineers, instead they call them experts at writing if-else statements. But kind of depends on whom you ask. I'm kidding about that, by the way. My understanding of machine learning engineers is that they really work in applied machine learning. In other words, they are the people who train machine learning models, deploy machine learning models. This is in contrast with another role, the sixth role, machine learning researchers. Machine learning researchers are people who work much more in theoretical machine learning at Google, much more in a research capacity. And my understanding of that role is that it's really geared for people who have research experience or are interested in research and potentially publicizing papers, that type of work. Okay, so that's all the machine learning stuff. What else? There's still a lot of engineering roles. I guess the seventh, seventh one that we could talk about is the UX engineer, UXE. The UX engineer is an interesting role, kind of lives in between the software engineer and the UX designer. UX designers are designers, they're not engineers. UX engineers, they work specifically on the front end, at least as far as I know, and roughly half of their job is to be a UX designer, and half of their job is to be an engineer. And so you'll often see them working kind of at the crossroads between UX design and engineering. For instance, they might work on common components that are going to be used across all of Google or across all of Google Cloud Platform, that type of stuff. And by the way, I think that the UX engineering role is a very cool role. For people who are into that, who really do like externally facing products and UX design, but who also like engineering, it's a very interesting and unique role. Okay, next on the list, number eight, I think, is the engineering manager. The engineering manager role at Google is very interesting. Basically, if you're an engineer at Google, there is this ladder, this engineering ladder, it's kind of like the hierarchy of engineering at the company. So if you get promoted, you go up that ladder, L3, L4, L5, L6, blah, blah. Past a certain level, and it's at L5 at Google, you can stop going up in the ladder, and instead you can kind of go diagonally into the engineering management ladder. And so engineering managers are really people who manage engineers. Oh, sorry, we had a little accident over there. So where was I? Engineering managers, they're an interesting role because engineering managers are effectively engineers. They have to be highly skilled and highly qualified engineers. They have to be at least at the L5 Google engineer level, which is a senior engineer at Google, but they really don't write code anymore. It's very rare to see an engineering manager write code. It's very rare to see an engineering manager review code, to be honest. I think that some do a little bit, but most don't. Engineering managers are really people managers, except the people they're managing are engineers. So I guess you can't really call them people managers. Get it? because engineers aren't people. But yeah, I think it's a really interesting role. It's one of the roles that I was most interested in at Google. I think that you definitely have to enjoy people management if you want to become an engineering manager. You have to want to do one-on-ones with people to resolve conflicts, to resolve drama if there is drama, or to do performance reviews 
all that stuff. But you'll also have the cool opportunity to sometimes, you know, help shape the direction of a product because, you know, engineering at Google is very important and so engineers have a lot of power. So engineering managers have a lot of ability to shape the direction of certain products to decide if things can happen or if they can't happen. So it's a very interesting role. Now on the flip side of engineering management, if you stay on the engineering ladder, but as what's called an individual contributor, meaning not an engineering manager. There are a few unofficial titles that you can get. Team lead, tech lead, uber team lead. These are all kind of synonymous titles. They're unofficial. You can basically get them at any level starting at L4. You can be a team lead at L4 of a small team or of a small project. They're very dependent on the team that you're on. In other words, some teams just won't have TLs as they're known. Others are gonna have a very strong TL culture. And Uber TL is just a fancy title for kind of like a TL of TLs. Typically, these are gonna be the people who are in charge of a big project, in charge of scoping out engineering work, either making major design decisions or making sure that other qualified engineers on the team are making the right design decisions. But a TL is typically not a people manager. Very important. Again, I really wanna stress the fact that people management meaning when you have direct reports, people who report to you, that's engineering management. If you're a TL, you might in practice sort of be managing engineers, but you will not be managing them from a people management point of view. You will be managing them from a work point of view. Like here's the part of the project that you're gonna be in charge of and I'll be reviewing your code or reviewing your design docs, not talk to me about your life and how you feel today. Okay, so enough about engineering, and now let's jump into some of the other technical roles at Google that work very closely with engineers, but that aren't engineers. So the first one is gonna be the PM, the product manager. This is a very interesting role. It's the role that I used to be the most interested in. It's the role that I basically wanted when I got into coding. I learned to code in large part because I wanted to be a product manager and because at companies like Google, you have to know how to code. You basically have to have been a software engineer or to have a heavy software engineering background to become a PM. And so product managers, they're sometimes described as mini CEOs of a product at Google. For instance, the product manager on one of Google Cloud Platform's products or the product manager of, I don't know, some feature about the Google Home. But the interesting thing there is that I've heard from from PMs at Google that this description of being a mini CEO isn't really accurate because a lot of PMs feel like they don't actually have a lot of decision making ability. They feel like they're kind of chasing dogs or chasing cats. What's the expression? Chasing herds? Chasing sheep? What's the expression? Chasing something. They're always chasing after engineers, chasing after designers, chasing after whomever to try to get stuff done, but they don't really have that much power. Now, the interesting thing about PMs is that they aren't people managers. To become a people manager as a PM, you have to go really high up the PM ladder, higher up than you would have to go to become an engineering manager where you are effectively a people manager. So for example, there are L6 engineering managers at Google who have like 12 direct reports. And then if you're an L6 PM, you're gonna have zero or maybe one direct report. And if you're maybe an L8 PM, you're gonna have at most like five direct reports, at least from what I've seen and from what I've heard. Don't quote me on that. But that's an interesting part about being a PM. You're not a people manager. You are first and foremost a product manager. Okay, so after PM, I think now we're what, at number 10 or something, there is the TPM. A TPM is a technical program manager. Technical program managers are this 
kind of hybrid role where they serve as the liaison between PMs and engineers and other functions to make sure that shit gets done, to make sure that projects get done. It's a weird role to describe, but that's the best way that I can think of how to describe it. They help make sure that stuff gets done, that deadlines are met, that the appropriate processes are followed, that approvals are received. If you have to launch a big product at Google, you're gonna need some kind of legal approval, security approval, all kinds of approvals. They're gonna make sure that these approvals are obtained. That's what a TPM is. Two other roles that I wanna mention that often go unmentioned, but that I think are very important, are UX writers and technical writers. I think that they're separate roles, but basically, UX writers are the people who are going to be in charge of writing the text that you see on externally facing Google products. Like imagine you're using a Google Cloud Platform product, there's a ton of text on the forms, on the buttons, all over the place. And if you're using something like, I don't know, Google Search or YouTube, there's also text on the buttons, you know, the trending page, the creator studio, if you're a creator and you upload videos, UX writers are going to be the people who write that text. And it's actually a very, very, very important role that I think is often unappreciated. And then the technical writer is the same thing, except my understanding is that a technical writer works more on documentation, very technical writing, hence the title technical writer. But so that's another role that a lot of people don't think about that's really important. And then I guess one more title that I forgot to mention is the UX researcher. UX researchers are people who conduct research on the user experience of products. They're very important, especially for products that cater to millions or billions of users. And they often work very closely with UX designers and engineers to implement metrics gathering and all sorts of stuff. So I think that that covers most of the technical roles. I'm sure that I'm missing some types of engineers, like for instance, yeah, there are security engineers that I'm probably missing. I'm probably missing some special title. There's also a type of engineer that works internally at the engineering help desks that we have at Google. So these are gonna be people who help you if you have problems with your desktop or with your laptop. These are people who are, in my opinion, the most like hacker type of engineer who really know their stuff around a computer. I don't really know what their exact title is, but they exist, they're a thing. And other than that, like I said, I think I might be missing some titles, but I think I covered most of the very well-known ones. With that, I hope that you found this video informative. Don't forget to smash the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Do it now. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, do it now. Right now. Not later. Not tomorrow, not after tomorrow, now. And I'll see you in the next video.